In this video, we're going to talk about some of the accounts that flow through other comprehensive income. And what all these accounts have in common is that they're trying to reduce the volatility in earnings on a year-to-year -year basis. And that's why managers want these accounts to flow through other comprehensive income rather than flowing through earnings directly. So available for sale securities can affect other comprehensive income in a couple of different ways. And one is when there's an unrealized gain or loss on an available for sale security. And unrealized means you haven't sold the security yet. And when you do sell the security, then it will flow through earnings. But when it's unrealized and you haven't sold the security yet, it's going to go through other comprehensive income. Now, if you have taken an impairment on an available for sale security. So if it's been previously impaired as an other than temporary impairment, in which case it would have been directly, the loss would have been directly booked and flowed through earnings. If you've already done that, and then later the security increases or decreases in value, then that subsequent decrease or increase in the available for sale security, that also will flow through other than compre other comprehensive income. Now, with pensions, Pensions can also affect other comprehensive income in a number of ways. One is if there's a gain or loss because there's a difference between the expected and the actual return on plan assets, so the expected versus the actual return, if there's some kind of difference there, then that can flow through other comprehensive income. Now, that's, that's assuming, of course, that the difference isn't so big that it gets out this outside the thing we call the corridor and have corridor amortization, in which case it could. The amount that gets outside this corridor could affect uh, pension expense. And we talk about that in another video. But in gen generally speaking, the difference between expected return and actual return on the pension plan assets is going to flow through other comprehensive income. Also, if the, if the plan is amended to grant prior service costs uh, to, to employees, for example, an employee that worked there 10 years, you decide to give them additional three years of credit of, of service for the firm to increase their pension. Uh, so that's going to increase pension liability. It's also going to affect other comprehensive income. Now, this is going to be amortized over time. So the prior service cost is going to be amortized, and then it's going to go to pension expense as it's amortized. But the amount that is not amortized in the current period, uh, that's actually going to flow through other comprehensive income. Foreign currency transactions can also affect other comprehensive income. Uh, for example, with, with translation adjustments, uh, if, on an intra-entity, so within firm foreign currency transaction that is of a long-term investment nature, I know that's a mouthful, but in those cases, that can flow through other comprehensive income. Also, a gain or loss on a foreign currency derivative that's basically a hedge, a hedge of the foreign currency exposure of a net investment in a foreign operation. So if you have an investment, your firm has an investment in a foreign company, and they, they have a foreign currency hedge, uh, then that's basically going to be booked to other comprehensive income as a part of the cumulative trans, uh, currency translation adjustments made that period. Now also, so, so that's a type of derivative, but there, there's also, if you have a cash flow hedge, uh, the effective portion of a cash flow hedge is going to go through other, other comprehensive income. If the cash flow hedge is ineffective, then it's not, this is actually just going to be charged directly to her, earnings. And a cash flow hedge, and I'll make another video on this, but it's basically just, this is a derivative uh, that, that's hedging the exposure to the cash flows of some kind of forecasted uh, transaction. And so this is initially booked to other comprehensive income, but when the forecasted transaction that this thing is hedging, when that future transaction actually takes place and affects earnings, uh, then this will be reclassified from, from OCI uh, to net income. So th these aren't all the different types of, of things that could affect other comprehensive income, but if, if you look at the financial statements, these are, these are the most common, but you'll see other things like pensions, for example. Uh, you'll see some, you might see something like transition assets or obligations. Uh, and those are things that are remaining from the initial application of uh, statements on financial accounting standards 87 and, and 106. So, so there are different things that, that you might see, but this will give you a, a, the main idea of the things that you'd see in other comprehensive